Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Mubanga um, Walia. I think it has already been said. Um, let me just share the presentation. Okay, um, so I think let me thank the Radiological Society of Zambia for this opportunity to make this presentation. Um, I think we are trying to encourage a lot of uh, radiographers uh, to do these case reports. And we felt that this is an opportunity to actually, uh, you know, present a case and encourage others to participate in case present, uh, taking part in uh, preparing of case reports. So I think with, in the interest of time, we'll go straight into the presentation. So this is our presentation outline. Uh, we'll look at uh, the background briefly to a pentalogy of Cantrell. Um, after that, we'll dive into the actual presentation and uh, have it uh, look at the conclusion. So just to uh, look at the, uh, some of the abbreviations we're going to use in this presentation. So uh, POC basically will stand, uh, will be in the place of pentalogy of Cantrell. CBAs uh, means uh, congenital birth anomalies. EC uh, will stand for ectopic, uh, ectopia codis. And then TOF will stand for tentralogy of fallout. Um, the others, maybe you may already be familiar with them. G2 means uh, uh, gravida 2, P1, para 1, uh, LMP, last menstrual period, GA, gestation, uh, uh, gestation age, URF, uh, ultrasound uh, um, request form, MO, medical officer, then FHR, fetal heart rate, VE, vaginal examination, HOF, height of fundus, IUFD, intrauterine and fetal death, FSB, fresh still birth, SVD, spontaneous vaginal delivery, uh, C stroke S, standing for caesarean section. So, um, just a background on pentalogy of control. What is pentalogy of control? I think the previous speaker mentioned that there are five things involved. So, basically, pentalogy of control is a cluster or a group of midline congenital birth anomalies that present in a newborn. So, here we are looking at anomalies relating to the heart, the pericardium, the sternum, the diaphragm, and the abdominal wall. So um, if you may allow me just to briefly talk about the, those relating to the heart. So here you are talking about ectopia cordis. This is a situation where the heart is sighted uh, completely or partially outside the uh, thoracic uh, cavity. So you also see another uh, anomaly relating to the heart referred to as tentralogy or fallout. Now, this one also presents four other defects within itself. So this is where you have um, a right ventricular outflow tract obstruction. So you have narrowing uh, or sometimes probably complete closure of the outflow tract from the right ventricle. So you have a situation where there is the reduced blood, uh, blood outflow. And we know that when that happens, usually the system we're we talking about the heart here, the system will try to um, improve this blood outflow. So you find that there will be that increase in the right ventricular activity or pressure. So this will also contribute to what is referred to as uh, right ventricular hypertrophy, because we know when muscles, uh, there's change in the activity of a muscle, the muscle tends to increase in mass. So this leads to what is referred to as a right ventric ventricular hypertrophy. So, also in tetralogy of fallout, you also see a VSD, which is ventricular septal defect. So there's abnormal communication between the, the ventricles. So there's mixing of blood oxygenated and the one which is uh, not oxygenated. So you find that um, there's that mixing of, uh, of the blood. Then again, in the, uh, tetralogy of fallout, you also see what is referred to as overriding iota. So this is a situation where the iota is placed uh, over a ventricular septal defect, okay? So you have a situation where this mixed blood is the one that is channeled through the iota. So the it, it, tetralogy of fallout is one of those um, group of anomalies that you also see in pentalogy of control. So pentalogy of control actually can be complete or incomplete. So the complete version is where you have all five 
uh, anomalies present. Okay, so you have the five anomalies present. Then in, in the incomplete version, you have just some of them presenting uh, 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 in the um, uh, in, in the fetus or in the baby in this case, if it has been delivered and is uh, alive. So how common is this uh, pentalogy of Cantrell? I think the previous speaker also gave um, uh, some of the data on that area. So literature reports that it has an incidence of one in every 65,000 births with a regional prevalence of 5.5 per 1 million live births. So it's quite a rare uh, condition. And um, um, it was quite actually, uh, though in another sense it may be understood differently, but it was quite fortunate for us to actually pick it up. And we quickly thought, no, 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 we need to do a case report on this one. So it's very important that it's diagnosed during pregnancy because um, pregnancy or during pregnancy is the very important opportunity that this can be diagnosed so that appropriate treatment can be uh, instituted. So health professionals involved in antenatal care must acquire adequate knowledge regarding pentalogy of Cantrell. So basically what are fetal anomalies? So there are so many definitions, but maybe if we just focus on uh, WHO's definition. So WHO uh, defines congenital anomalies as structural or functional anomalies that, that occur during inter intrauterine life. So globally, we see that it's a, it's, it is estimated that uh, 295,000 newborns die due to congenital anomalies within 28 days of birth annually. I think very important information, which I thought I should share uh, as an added uh, information to the background. So our focus in this case, uh, as you will come to appreciate, is that imaging, imaging, imaging is very important. Um, you agree with me that imaging uh, is a means of appreci appreciating internal anatomy without resorting to um, invasive means such as uh, surgery. You would agree with me that without imaging in some of these conditions, they would have to open up and see what's going on. And that just contributes uh, negative impacts on the health uh, of either the, the, the patient or in, in our case here, it would be a, a negative impact on the mother as well as the fetus. So I think when it comes to imaging, in this case, we want to look at uh, uh, which imaging modalities here we're talking about. I think we understand and appreciate that uh, when it comes to the fetus, we want as much as possible to use non-ionizing radiation. What are we talking about here? We're talking about imaging modalities such as ultrasound and MRI for the purpose of protecting these fetus from unnecessary radiation exposure. So uh, you agree with me that uh, in instances where the baby is born and is growing, um, then in that case, you find that other imaging modalities that are ionizing, for example, X-ray and CT, are also used now to monitor the growth of these babies and uh, you know monitor the these anomalies. Um, so it's very important, I think, for us to have in our uh, you know uh, in our minds that when we're talking about imaging here, we're talking about before uh, a birth and after birth. Very important because this is the focus of even our our case uh, report. So I think the other very important thing that we need to talk about is antenatal. Antenatal care is key when it comes to these uh, anomalies. So antenatal care is one of the approaches used uh, in, in healthcare to ensure that the baby is monitored, the, uh, the mother is monitored so that the, uh, the baby is healthy, the mother is healthy, and above all that the woman delivers a healthy baby uh, to reduce maternal and neonatal mortalities. I think very important um, uh, 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 in, in terms of the role of antenatal care in this aspect. So our country, Zambia, like many others, they ascribe to WHO recommendations when it comes to antenatal visits. So the recommendation is that it's a minimum of four antenatal visits uh, should be adequate. More could be requested for, but uh, four are adequate uh, to to monitor uh, the growth of the fetus and also uh, probably uh, yeah to monitor the growth of the fetus and pick up any uh, anomalies or any other unusual issues that may need to be picked up so that's the appropriate treatment or uh, is is given. So during antenatal, uh, 
uh, care, we understand that women are offered several services, but I would like just to probably focus on one. Uh, we know that they are given antenatal booking, that is when they'll come back for another visit and so on and so forth. There are other services, I know there are lab sa uh, services that are provided, but most importantly in our case, we are looking at ultrasound. So the ultrasound is one of the very important ingredients uh, of antenatal care when it comes to uh, identifying these anomalies. So we know that uh, during ultrasound, the main issues that are needed is you want to confirm the viability. Uh, you want to know if this baby, this, this fetus is viable and also establish the gest gestation age. This is very important. So there's also need uh, to identify if it's multiple or single. This is very important. So during ultrasound also, we screen for fetal anomalies. Uh, and also the uh, location of the placenta. So I think one thing that should be mentioned is that when it comes to pentalogy of control, I think uh, uh, ultrasound is undertaken in the second trimester to uh, 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 identify these anomalies of which one of them is uh, pentalogy of control. So I think the, the understanding there is that you want to detect these things quite early, but also you want to be able to appreciate the uh, fetal anatomy. So the second trimester is uh, is positioned, you know, in the middle of all this. And at that particular time, you're able to appreciate some of these anomalies well uh, and to record them and, of course, report on them. So I think in uh, having done that, let's jump in and look at this case that we are trying to report on, a case of medical imaging, uh, 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 a report on the medical imaging of pentalogy of control in Zambia. So we present a female 23 years old, um, gravida two, para one, basically there we just mean she was in a second uh, pregnancy and um, she already has one child that is alive. I think one thing that should be mentioned here is that this child, the, the para one here was carried uh, to full term and was born normally and had no abnormalities. Very important here because there's seen uh, anomalies that may be, you know, may be, may manifest in, even the children that may come after that. So this is very important. Um, so this uh, patient was referred from a rural health center to a second level hospital for ultrasound, and they wanted to confirm malpresentation. So uh, the patient didn't know her last, remember or recall her last menstrual period. So because of that, the just saying age by dates was unknown. So she had no uh, uh, history of having an, had an ultrasound scan. Uh, and on the day of admission, uh, the patient was sent to the radiology department for an obstetric scan. She was escorted by the midwife. So on the first day of admission, the first ultrasound scan, so the ultrasound request form read obstetric ultrasound to rule out malpresentation. The ultrasound scan was done. Uh, we used um, uh, uh, an I3, a Chisoni ultrasound machine, as you can see there. That's, I just wanted to give a picture so that people appreciate uh, the equipment that we used in the, uh, uh, the imaging in this case. So a summary of the ultrasound scan uh, was that the, uh, it was a single live intrauterine fetus, a bridge presentation. The sonographer indicated that the Leica volume was inadequate. And then gestation age by measure of bipyroidal diameter was 8.62 centimeters, which was equivalent to 34 weeks, five days. So this sonographer indicated that uh, uh, he was unable to appreciate the abdominal uh, contents. So the ultrasound report was given to the midwife and the findings were actually brought to the attention of the patient by the medical uh, officer who was uh, the attending at that particular time. So on the second of admission, uh, when the midwife was reviewing this patient doing the uh, normal uh, screening and so on and so forth. She noted that the, uh, the patient had gone into labor. The baby, the baby was in breach. The fetal heart rate was 136 beats per, mi per minute and regular. So on vaginal examination, something protruding from the valve was felt, which was perceived to be fetal intestine or bowel. So as per protocol, they are required to call for the, the medical officer to come and review the, uh, the patient. So the MO was contacted and he confirmed that the patient was actually in established labor with moderate contractions. The height of fundus uh, was noted to be 32 over 40. Uh, the baby was in breach. The fetal heart uh, was head and regular. So um, 
uh, um, as the AMO continued to do his assessment, so he noted that the uh, the os was dilated was four centimeters actually, and he also noted soft tissue protrusion, not pulsatile, greenish in color, perceived as fetal intestine. So a repeat portable ultrasound scan was requested, and uh, the request form in this case read uh, obstetric ultrasound scan to rule out fetal anomalies. So um, a portable ultrasound uh, scan in this case was requested because the patient was in the ward as it now. So we did, we got a portable ultrasound machine, a Mindro GP10, and we went there to do the scan. So the summary of the scan was that, uh, again, a viable intrauterine fetus, bridge presentation, fetal head and placenta were noted to be in fundal area of the uterus, as can be seen in the image that has been provided. Apologies that the image has not been notated, but I hope you can see my cursor here. So this is the fetal head. And then we have the placenta here, which is uh, in this case can be interpreted as posterior, fundal posterior placenta. So the other things that were noted was a chest wall defect with a hard sided partially external thoracic, the thoracic cavity. Um, as you can see on the image on the right there, that's the uh, profile of the heart. So you will notice that the top part there, there's no covering there. So this was a partial, a partially sighted uh, 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 heart, which was uh, partially external to the thoracic uh, cavity. Also a defective anterior abdominal wall was noted. So you see that on the uh, sonogram on, on your right, um, if you can see my cursor, so that is a bow there. So it is open there and then you have the liver there, which is also uh, can be seen there protruding from the uh, uh, defective abdominal wall. So the final report read uh, the um, single intrauterine fetus bridge presentation with thoracic abdominal wall defects with ectopia cordis and the gastrochesis at the two weeks, six days gestation, a case of pentalogy of Cantrell. So at this time, I think if we have, we have uh, followed uh, and appreciated the, uh, the events as they unfolded, uh, I, I wanted us to look at the outcome of the pregnancy. So following that second ultrasound scan, the medical officer um, noted the findings and explained the findings to the patients and provided counseling. Very important information, I think, to indicate here. So the patient was advised to consider accepting cesarean section, looking at the, uh, the findings. But the patient insisted on um, uh, spontaneous vaginal, vaginal de delivery unless all failed. So later in that, in the morning, later that morning, um, as the midwife again was doing her job, she noted that she was unable to appreciate the fetal heart. So the medical officer again was contacted to come and review the patient and she confirmed, and he confirmed rather that it was an IUFT, intrauterine fetal uh, death. So the baby uh, was born, SVD, a female uh, fresh stillbirth, weighing 1,860 grams. So um, you will see from the picture on the right, that's the actual image. Apologies for probably not warning people before uh, showing that image. Um, so the baby was noted to have thoracic abdominal wall defects. Uh, ectopia cortis, herniation of the liver and spleen and bowels. I'm sure you can appreciate from the image. So also uh, the fetus had a poorly, uh, the baby rather had the poorly formed upper limbs with clenched hands, each with two fingers. So uh, normally as per protocol, usually in these cases, they show the baby to the mother because uh, they have to appreciate uh, what has uh, happened. Uh, so they showed this fetus to the mother and then uh, counseling was done. So she was uh, kept for observation after that. And um, after adequate counseling was done and it was determined that she was fit for discharge, uh, she was dis discharged uh, the following day. So maybe just to conclude on this presentation and what we've briefly looked at. So pentalogy of Cantrell, as we have said, can be classified as complete and incomplete. And we can see a, um, uh, that um, in our case, what we had 
was a case of ectopia cordis. So the heart was sighted partially outside the thoracic cavity. We had uh, uh, a defect in the abdominal wall. And because of that, we had gastrochesis. We practically had the bowels that were out, the liver and spleen. So there are instances where you may have two or three of these anomalies uh, present in, uh, in that case, it still qualifies to be pentalogy of control. You may have all five, it still qualifies to be pentalogy of control. So um, I think we, I briefly talked about uh, tetralogy of fallout and its presentation in these cases of pentalogy of control. Our case, because the fetus, of course, was uh, not alive at the time of delivery. Obviously, we couldn't get this information in terms of uh, the extent to which the heart was impaired. But there are instances where a fetus is born, and then in their, as they grow, these uh, anomalies, especially uh, with regard to tetralogy of uh, they present, and the management is tailored to ensure that they support the lives of these uh, babies uh, and and improve their uh, their life and and so on and so forth. So I think I've already highlighted that imaging is crucial in the identifying of these abnormalities uh, before birth. Non-ionizing uh, imaging modalities are employed. Uh, you are talking of ultrasound, I think, which forms a bigger part of our presentation here. And MRI can also be used in certain instances. Uh, after birth, you may use uh, x-rays, CT, even ultrasound is still used to monitor uh, the, 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 these babies even as they grow and also monitor their, uh, their, their, uh, their, their anomalies. So ultrasound basically is a preferred first line method for use in antenatal screening of structural or functional anomalies because of obvious reasons. It is um, less costly, it's non-invasive, painless, provides high res uh, resolution. Uh, and information in uh, real uh, time. So this case report highlights uh, the importance of well-organized antenatal care services, which is supported by ultrasound to identify these conditions. Very important. Uh, I think we've already highlighted that uh, it is uh, uh, readily, it's almost readily available. I think it's one of those imaging modalities that is readily available in most hospitals. So it plays a very important role. And the fact that you can use it uh, uh, during pregnancy to uh, screen for these anomalies, especially as it has already been indicated in the second trimester. So it is very important, okay? So early detection of these fetal anomalies for appropriate management and counseling of a pregnant woman is very important because once these anomalies are detected, then the management changes. They're able to provide as a uh, uh, counseling to this uh, pregnant woman, prepare them uh, for the delivery and also probably provide options, better options for them to think about and uh, consider. So it's very important that hospitals, especially in rural areas and uh, 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 even in urban areas where they do not have uh, ultrasound machines that these things are provided but most importantly, there's need to have people that are trained to uh, pick up these things. You may agree with me that some of these anomalies may not easily be picked up by just anyone. It requires someone who has been trained adequately to pick them up and ensure that uh, appropriate uh, 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 diagnosis is given. Uh, even on the report there, if there's a provision, you indicate, say, this is what I'm thinking about, and these features are suggestive of this and this and this. And I think this is very, uh, very uh, important. Most importantly, I think that should also be mentioned is that hospitals should have dedicated obstetric facilities uh, in the provinces, uh, specifically to ensure that appropriate ultrasound services are given and so that women can be, can be provided with appropriate ultrasound services so that these abnormalities can be screened for uh, and picked up quite early as we have already indicated. Allow me just to give my acknowledgements. I would like to acknowledge the medical superintendent who gave us permission to publish this case report. I should indicate that uh, things are already in process and uh, uh, I may not be unable, I may not be able to share 
a PowerPoint, a PowerPoint of this presentation because uh, the uh, case has not yet been published, but things are uh, in process. So I would like to acknowledge a colleague of mine, uh, Ms. Ndanji Ivich Kasa, uh, from the imaging aspect, uh, for her contribution to this case report. Dr. Wanga, very, uh, very uh, a wonderful contribution to this case report. Uh, Dr. Makukula, who is a consultant a gynecologist and obstetrician, uh, also contributed to this uh, case report. Dr. Ngosa, uh, also from the Department of Obstetric and Gynecology, and also Mr. Chanda Ernest, uh, he also contributed significantly to this uh, project. So I think that's the end of the presentation. Those are the references. Um, I think at this particular time, I may allow contribution 